All right, you guys. So today we're going to be reviewing how to multiply polynomials. This is a review because you did learn this in grade 10. Um, so we're going to go over all of the different rules of multiplying polynomials today. Uh, let's just get started. So we're going to look at question number one. And this sheet was in the previous handout that I gave you guys yesterday. So for the first question, actually, it's just a review of what we did yesterday of distributive property. So I'm just going to write those words down so you remember. Um, distributive property is whenever you have a number on the outside of the bracket to get rid of it, we have to distribute that number to everything inside of the bracket. So in this example, for example, I'm going to take the three and I'm going to multiply it to the first two terms and I'm going to take the negative four and I'm going to multiply it to the second two terms. I know we did this yesterday. I just included it as a further review. Three times X is going to give me three X. Three times positive two is going to give me positive six. Negative four times two X is going to give me negative eight X and negative four times positive five is going to give me negative two, 20. If any of this is confusing, then you really need to go back and review your grade nine multiplying monomial stuff um, and ask me questions, of course. After this step, what we're going to do is we're going to collect like terms. Now, you don't have to rewrite it with the X's and the constants. That's something we did in grade nine and 10. If you guys want to go straight to the answer, you can. Um, I'm just going to show all of my work. So in my next step, I'm going to take all of my X's and put them together. I'm going to take all of the constants and I'm going to put them together. And basically, now you have everything grouped nicely so you can add or subtract like terms. 3X minus 8X is going to give me negative 5X. And then positive six minus 20, remember different signs, you subtract the numbers and take the sign of the bigger number. So 20 take away six is 14. The sign of the bigger number is negative. So it would just be negative 14. Um, for those of you guys that weren't with us last class, I'll just go over some, some of the things that I said. Um, whenever you were doing math, you guys have to remember to always work from top to bottom. So we're never working side to side. You wanna make sure your equal signs line up more or less. And then your final answer, I just want you to circle, box, underline, or highlight it. Okay, so I consider this to be review from yesterday. Let's go into our new review, which is this question like this. So here you can see you have a binomial in a bracket and then another binomial in a bracket. And whenever you have two brackets touching like they are, um, what operation is supposed to be between them? Addition, subtraction, multiplication, or division? Ben? What operation is between these two signs over here? Like, it's a multiplication, exactly. So basically what you're doing is you're multiplying two binomials. And in grade 10, we learned, and you may have learned it a different way, but I usually teach the word FOIL, F-O-I-L. The F stands for first, the O stands for outer, the I stands for inner, and the L stands for last. And so when I'm doing a question like this, what I'm gonna do is I'm first gonna multiply the first two terms together. So the first term in this bracket and the first term in this bracket. And that is what the F stands for. So we're gonna go ahead and multiply those. A three X times a four X would give me 12 X squared. So um, I think some of the questions I was getting yesterday is when you have an X and an X, what you're gonna do is you're gonna add the exponents together and that's how you get X squared. So we're gonna get 12 X squared. Now for the next part, the O, we're going to multiply the two outermost brackets, so or the two outermost terms. So it's going to be the 3x times the negative 5. What's 3x times negative 5? Negative 15x. Yeah, you guys can just say it out loud. Once we're done that, we're ready to start working on the next two. I'm just going to move that down. So we're going to start working on the I and the L. So the I stands for inner, and that means we're going to multiply the two innermost terms in the bracket, which is the positive two times the four X. That's going to give me positive eight X. And then for our very last one, it's L, which is last. And so we're going to multiply the last two terms, which are positive two times negative five, and that's going to give us negative 10 X. Is this familiar to you guys? Sorry, no X, you're right. Is this familiar? Yes. OK, great. So now we need to clean it up and collect like terms. The only two terms that are like are the two middle ones. So our final answer is going to be 12x squared. Yep, 12x squared um, minus, it's not 8x. Yep, 7x. 
minus 10. Any questions about that? No, all right. Let's keep going. Uh, what happens if you have a binomial and a trinomial? It's actually exactly the same thing, except you're not gonna have the acronym FOIL anymore. You're basically going to take the first term and you can do it in any order you want. So I, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the first term and I'm gonna multiply it here, here, and here. And then I'm gonna take the second term and I'm gonna multiply it here, here, and here. And you're honestly gonna end up with a very long string of terms. Then you're gonna start collecting like terms and adding and subtracting what you can. Okay, so I'm gonna start all the way on this side of the page. X times X squared is X cubed. X times positive two X is gonna be positive two X squared. X times negative eight is gonna be negative eight X. Negative three times X squared is gonna be negative three X squared. Negative three times positive two X is gonna be negative six X. And negative three times negative eight is gonna be positive 24. Did I miss anything or I think I got everything. Okay, we can collect like terms. So I'm going to have the x cubed by itself. There's nothing that goes with it. I see that there are two x squared. So I'm going to put those together. Then I'm going to put the x's and then I'm going to have the constant at the end. If you're wondering if you have to uh, write this step, you don't. And then to finish off the question, we're just going to add uh, what we can. So here we're going to have x cubed and then it's going to be negative x squared then it's going to be negative 14x, and then it's going to be positive 24. Pause here. Let me just check. Okay, so here is a type of question that you may not have seen in grade 10. However, you have, um, you are able to solve something like this. So if I were to rewrite this, it would be 2a minus 1 times 2a minus 1 times 2a minus 1. You basically have a binomial times a binomial times a binomial. And what you're going to do for this question is you're just going to take it in steps. So you're going to multiply the first two brackets together using FOIL, and then you're going to take whatever you get from there and multiply it to the last bracket. So I'm going to go ahead and do uh, my FOIL method on these two, two brackets first. Okay, so that's going to look like 2a times 2a is 4a squared. And I won't draw arrows this time because we've done it a couple of times. Then outer is 2a times negative 1 is negative 2a. Inner is negative 1 times 2a is negative 2a. And last is negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. And I'm going to keep all of that in a bracket just so I know that I'm grouping those together and solving for the first two brackets. Have I lost anyone or we're okay? We're good. Let's clean it up. So the middle two terms are going to be negative 4a plus 1 and then 2a minus 1. Now this question, letter D, is the exact same as question C. See, in question C, we had a binomial times a trinomial. Now we have a trinomial times a binomial. It's the exact same thing. If it helps, you can actually change the order so the binomial comes first. It really doesn't matter. In the end, you're going to be multiplying everything with everything. Okay, so I'm just going to keep it in this order. 4a squared times 2a is going to give me 8a cubed. 4a squared times negative 1 is negative 4a squared. Now I'm on to the, uh, this one over here. So negative 4a times 2a is negative 8a squared. Negative 4a times negative 1 is positive 4a. And the last number is positive 1 times 2a is positive 2a. Positive 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. Did I get everything? I think I did. I'm just going to finish off the question by collecting like terms. So oh, they're actually everything is collect collected really nicely. So it's just going to be negative 12a squared. Now you change it. Uh, plus 6a minus 1. All right, for, um, actually, it's not the last question. I realize there's a 2A as well. For question E, 
Uh, you have like a mixture of everything. So the way I group these, this question together, if I were to group it, I recognize that I have um, a bunch of terms over here. Then I have a subtraction sign and then I have a bunch of binomials over here. So basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna keep them separate. You're gonna foil the first couple of brackets. Then you're gonna foil the second couple of brackets. Then you're gonna subtract everything from one another. Okay, so here's what it's gonna look like. Um, I'm gonna have four and then in brackets, I'm gonna multiply X minus four and three plus X. So this is gonna give me three X uh, plus X squared minus 12 minus four X. And I'm gonna do the same thing over here. I'm gonna keep the negative three and I'm gonna multiply those brackets. So it's gonna be X cubed plus two X squared minus five X squared minus 10, minus 10 X. I'm gonna clean up what's inside the brackets and collect like terms before I distribute the three. I like to do that whenever I FOIL, I like to um, collect like terms before I start getting into the next step, just because it's always good to clean it up before you get move forward. So I'm gonna rewrite this in descending order, it's X squared. Then we have a three X minus four X, which is a negative X. And then we have a negative 12. Then minus three, and this is going to be X cubed minus 3x squared minus 10x. Okay, final, actually second last step, let's distribute the numbers in the front and then add everything together. So we're gonna have 4x squared minus 4x, uh, minus 48 minus 3x cubed plus 9x squared plus 30x. And then we're going to have negative 3x cubed plus 13x squared plus 26x minus 48. Let me know if you guys get that same answer. So question number two is very similar to the one that we did yesterday, where it says, determine whether the two following two expressions are equivalent. You're basically going to simplify each one of them separately and then figure out if they have the same answer, then they will be equivalent. So this one is a different question. And this one is also a different question. I need a better, there we go. Okay, so let's go ahead and simplify each of them and see if they end up giving us the same answers. Uh, all right, so I'm gonna use this here. This is gonna be 5a minus a squared minus 4a plus 2a squared. I'm gonna collect like terms, so I'm gonna get a squared plus a for my answer on the left. I just want to separate these two, so I'm going to draw a line. And then on this side, I'm going to do the same thing. So 4a squared times a is 4a cubed minus 4a squared minus 3a squared plus 5a. And I personally end up getting two absolutely different expressions. So it's clear that these are not equivalent. And I think in yesterday's class, we found two expressions that were equivalent. So um, I'm gonna leave this up for a bit if you're still copying. That actually takes us to the end of this, uh, this lesson, but there's a little bit more that I wanna do. 
Your homework is going to be page 95, numbers 1 to 12. I obviously don't want you to do all 12 questions. Um, in fact, I've given you them, given it to you on the next page so you don't have to use a PDF. Um, I actually think that maybe we can skip these ones over here. I think they're a little weird. So question 7, question 8, question 9 and 10, and everything else you can try. And of course, you don't have to do every single one. So if you wanted to maybe pick like the last three from each, like four D, E, and F, five D, E, and F, you decide what you feel you need more practice on, and then you can do those questions. So uh, like, which one should you do? You, I'm going to say definitely don't do seven, eight, nine, and 10. You don't have to do those. And everything else, just pick and choose which ones you'd like to try. <laughs> 